Hey, beautiful friends. We are here for a Friday Faith Foundations episode, and it is just you, me, and my mic. Today, we're going to talk about what does the Bible say about your identity? Hint, it's not in your revenue. There is a lot of noise out there about making six, seven, or eight figures. And if you don't, does that mean you aren't successful? Does the amount you make alter your identity as a successful business owner? Does the number of clients you have define whether or not you are a successful business owner? Good questions, right? And it's something that I have to say I have toyed with. Um, I have felt a sense of doubt and fear around from time to time. And I think it's something that a lot of us as small business owners and entrepreneurs experience because of everything that we consume and see online, not to anyone's fault, but it's just there. There's a lot of emphasis on it. If the business world has made you feel less than adequate, I want you to stop for a second and consider the question. What does the Bible say about your identity? It's really easy to link your work, your worth to your business success. When things are going well, clients are flowing in steadily, you may feel confident and worth success. But what happens when all of a sudden they're trickling in slowly or not at all? Do you continue to feel confident and worthy of success or do you begin to doubt your worth as maybe a health coach, life coach, healthcare provider, a writer, a creative, or whatever your business is related to? Satan uses doubt to distract you. God may have a plan to slow things down to redirect you, or to intentionally give you time and space to rest or evaluate your business. But Satan takes advantage of that downtime. He needles you, and he creates chaos in your mind, your heart, and your soul. He doesn't want you to be focused on God's plan for you. He doesn't want you trusting God. He wants to distract you and pull you away from your faith and that foundation that is going to keep you safe and secure. Most likely, we'll begin to ask many what if questions. What if this isn't my purpose? Am I on the wrong path? What if things don't turn around soon? Where will the next client come from? What if, what if, and more what ifs? When this happens, there's only one thing to do. Go to scripture. Go to scripture and discover the answer to the ultimate question. What does the Bible say about your identity? I have to do this too. Quite often, actually, I have to have this reminder. We all do. Because we are all, at one time or another, distracted by Satan and his antics, which he has a lot of. However, we don't have to succumb to him and his deception, his lies, because we can look directly at scripture to understand what God says about our identity. And what he says is beautiful. The Bible also assures us that we are free from darkness, as that is found in Isaiah 61, 1. And John tells us, in 1 John 17, 15, that we are protected from the evil one. Similarly, in Romans 5, 1, Paul reminds us that we are justified by faith. And likewise, in Hebrews 13, 5, we're told we are not forsaken. Your worth is not tied to your revenue or the number of clients you have. The amount of money you make as a business owner, the mistakes you make, the times you think you've failed, the number of clients you have, 
what other people say about you, none of those things define your identity. The only thing that defines your identity is what Christ says about you. Paul reminds us in 828 that we are called to God's purpose. If you don't have clarity around your purpose, make a list of your values, visions, and passions. Where they overlap is where you'll discover your purpose. Think of a Venn diagram. Where those three things, your values, visions, and passions overlap, where there are significant similarities, that's where you're going to find your purpose. But before doing that exercise, I want you to ask the Holy Spirit to guide you, to give you wisdom and knowledge to really recognize what your values, visions, and passions are, and to see where they align and how you can use that place where they align to signify your purpose. In John 15, 16, we are told that we are chosen and anointed to go and bear fruit. Being appointed by God is no small gesture. He loves and believes in you so much that he has called you to bear much fruit. What does that mean? That doesn't mean go out and make money. It could mean that, and that could be part of it. But it also means sharing his word, living in your purpose, serving the people he's called you to serve growing his kingdom and bringing glory to him, not to yourself, as Satan would have you convinced you need to do, pride, ego, all of those things, but we're to bring glory to him. He's calling and appointing you to serve and grow his kingdom, to bring glory to him. First Peter 2.9 tells us that we are chosen. You are Christ's ambassador as Paul eloquently told us in 2 Corinthians 5.20. There are many more verses than the ones previously mentioned that will showcase what your identity is in scripture. When you feel doubtful, fearful, any of those negative things, when Satan is creating chaos in your mind, refer to the verses within this episode, the blog post that I'll link in the show notes so that you have access. You can even print them out and always have them to refer to. Review these verses, hold them close to your heart so that you can reassure yourself of your identity, your identity in Christ. To use the verses, I encourage you to change the statements. I'm going to read them as you are statements. I encourage you to change them to I am statements, and you can use them in your meditation. You can use them as mantras or affirmations, um, but use them as constant reminders of who you are and how loyal God is to you. Genesis 1 27. You are created in God's image. Ephesians 1, 6, you are accepted. Jeremiah 1, 5, you are known and set apart. Ephesians 2, 10, you are God's handiwork. 2 Corinthians 5, 17 to 18, you are a new creation and reconciled by God. Romans 8, 16, you are an heir of God. Right there with Jesus, you are an heir. John 15, 9, and Galatians 20, 20, 2, 20, you are loved with a love everlasting, as Jeremiah 31, 3 says. Galatians 5, 22, you are filled with the fruit of the Holy Spirit. Ephesians 3, 16, 17, you are strengthened with the power of the Holy Spirit. Likewise, you are filled with the fruit of righteousness. 1 Corinthians 3, 17, you are a temple of the Holy Spirit. 1 John 2, 27, you are anointed with the Holy Spirit. Matthew 5, 14, you are the salt of the earth. Psalm 139, 14, you are fearfully and wonderfully made. You are made in the image of Christ. Romans 8, 37, you are more than a conqueror. That means Satan has no control over you. He does not have a grasp on you. 
You are more than a conqueror. You can conquer any situation you are presented through your faith, living on the foundation of Christ. John 15, 15, you are Jesus' friend. Philippians 3, 20, you are a citizen of heaven. Psalm 17, 7, 8, you are cherished. 1 John 3, 2 and John 1, 12, you are a child of God. John 17, 17, you are sanctified by truth. 1 Peter 1, 16, you are holy through Christ. Romans 6, 11, you are alive in Christ. Romans 1, 7, you are beloved of God. Psalm 34, 5, you are radiant. Romans 6, 18, you are a slave of righteousness. You are forgiven and cleansed. You are rescued by Jesus. You are Jesus' friend. You are crucified with Christ and he lives in you. You are redeemed by the blood of Jesus. You are no longer a slave to sin. You are saved. You are redeemed. You are forgiven with Christ. And one of my very favorites of all of these is you are radiant in Psalm 34, 5. And when we look to him, our faces are not covered in shame. As you can see from these Bible verses, your faith will definitely influence your business. When you depend on God to guide you, you will feel more confident in the purpose that he has prepared you for. You will know that he is going before you and creating a path that you can follow in confidence that he is leading you and he will protect you and he will care for you along that journey. In addition, you can experience his grace in a new light and show up to serve with joy. Your identity in Christ is part of your personal brand and the foundation of your business. No matter how much money that you make or how many clients you have, your identity is solid and your personal brand can be solid too when you rely on your faith to guide you and lead you and to conquer all of those distractions and doubts and fears that are thrown your way. So I encourage you, I have another resource for you of Bible verses, 37 of them, in fact, that every entrepreneur should reflect on and live by. It's a great list of Bible verses that I think will give you more confidence in including your faith in your business. And I'm not saying your faith has to be forward facing in your business like mine is, but if you wanna navigate the challenges and you want to avoid the fear and doubts, alleviate them, or be able to navigate them more effectively, I think these verses will definitely help you. And that is it for today, friends. I will see you back here next week.